Okie dokie. Some overall tips for this little task. Using first language, uh, sorry, first person language is perfectly acceptable. Um, there are many, many different models um, and theories of leadership and often they use the word model and then they'll use the word theory just to totally confuse you. It's basically the same thing. So please don't let that, you know, overwhelm you. Uh, so some of the ones that I've listed in the question are just a few. Some other examples are things like laissez-faire, relational, theories of follow followership, leader member exchange, symbolic leadership, you name it, they have it. There are so many. If you're worried that something that you have found is not a model or a theory, just email me and I can help you with that. Just, just check in with me and make sure you're on the right track. Some ways of doing leadership can be described in the research literature as both a model and as a theory, just to completely confuse you even more. And they use a variety of different uh, ways of talking about this. So make sure that when you're doing your search searches for specific types of um, leadership theories or models, that you go and you know find a really broad leadership text. And I think I'm pretty sure I provided you with a link to one of those. Actually, I better check that. Um, find the names of the theories. Uh, have a little bit of a read about them, and then find the ones that um, go and find the names of those ones. Then you can use those particular names as search terms in the databases to find more resources about those specific types of models and theories. Hopefully, that gives you um, some some suggestions there. Oh, next tips. Definitely read the wording of your question carefully. Don't miss anything. At times, students can totally look over or overlook, sorry, a part of the set task. And that could be, you know, a good portion of your mark. So, for example, a student might discuss only leadership rather than both leadership and management, which means you lose marks overall for the, um, for the response. Or they might only discuss one leadership model instead of two. So make sure you double check all of that. Be sure to include specific discussion and examples about your own practice and so that your links are clear. I'll talk about this more in a moment, but when you start, <clears throat> you really need to be able to say, so, you know, I had this particular thing happen to me when I was doing this work, uh, which demonstrates how I'm a transformational leader. Then describe it exactly what happened, right? Give me at least a few sentences of what happened so I can see, I can see in your example what transformational leadership looks like. Then at the end you need to link back to the literature and say, this clearly demonstrates this element of transformational leadership as discussed by Herman or whatever, okay? I hope that makes sense. I will give you some examples in a tick to show what I'm talking about. Include at least one reference per paragraph. Um, check the rubric the CRA rubric, marking rubric that I upload, uh, I have uploaded already for you. It will tell you exactly how what how many to do um, in each section. So if you want to get a high distinction, it will say at least 10 references. All right, so make sure you check that. Use it like a checklist. Use a standard essay structure, introduction, body, conclusion. Some feedback that students have had in the past, it... It, this is always quite helpful. Again, you can use this as a checklist to make sure that you've done everything okay. Stuff that they did well uh, in this particular task. So we're talking with a group of um, Tasmania police students that went through the inspectors course uh, last year. They did a fantastic job with the content. They followed the recommended structure, developed an argument throughout, and I have uploaded some, uh, I think, a reading that specifically talks about how to do that for you. And they've used references well to support their ideas. And of course, they've used their referencing style. So there's in-text citations in the paragraphs, and there's a reference list at the end. People who got higher marks had really good, clear sections discussing the differences and similarities between leadership and management. Uh, and they had two theories that they were focusing on and how those theories link to their practice overall. They use research literature, obviously, to support their reflective practice. I'll talk about that in a minute. Made clear points um, and link back to the topic in their discussion. 
had a clear conclusion noting precisely what the essay was going to discuss and this is, can be really clearly signposted like first this essay will discuss, second this essay will um, examine, finally this essay will move to talk about, in conclusion it will suggest, that, that's what I call signposting, it's really important in these types of essays. Briefly, defining your key terms is very important. Identifying the key issues that are going to be discussed is also a good way to get good marks. And that's very um, often happens in the introduction. I've already talked about signposting, but other things like, you know, the research to date clearly demonstrates the transactional forms of leadership are falling out of favour. That's a great uh, topic sentence for the beginning of a paragraph, for, for instance. Those that were proofread had clear structure, clear paragraphing, good grammar, spelling and punctuation, <coughs> always got better marks. <clears throat> Make sure you're developing full paragraphs where you're using at least five sentences. There is so much information online about how to develop paragraphs, but I'll chat a little bit more about that in a moment. Using subheadings and making sure that they are clearly referenced is very, very important. You don't want to get in trouble for having... Uh, Plagiarised material, which is where you copy it off offline and you don't, or copy it out of somebody else's work and you don't actually include a reference. Common problems were not linking reflective practice to the literature and the research and their theories and stuff like that. Using follow on sentences where they had however in the middle of a sentence. Typically, if you've got however in the middle of a sentence, there's a second sentence there. Sometimes it's well placed, but other times it's typically uh, a second sentence. So you just have to reword it. So it's two sentences. Not using subheadings was a bit of an ordeal, so make sure you try and do that. Having unclear paragraphing, a lot of people missed out on um, linking and transition, transition sentences at the end of their paragraphs. Again, something I can uh, talk through with you in a moment. And then using too many quotes was a big issue. We mark your work, not the work of others. So even though your quote might be relevant and you've perfectly woven it in, if you've got 15 or 20 of those in your essay, then there's a good portion of your essay that's just not your work. Paraphrase where you can. Show us that you know and understand the material. That's what we give you marks for. And, of course, unclear referencing um, is, is another issue. Very quickly working through the criteria sheet, you can see I've got things like addressing the set task, defining concepts, comparing contrasting different notions of leadership and management in the literature, identifying what you consider to be the strengths and weaknesses of different theories as they apply to practice. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. And I've clearly given you an indication across the criteria about where you, you know, I've got limited discussion of strengths and weaknesses, for instance, or uh, response clearly identifies and details key strengths and weaknesses of the two different theories and models they specifically apply. Communicating effectively by is, you know, using appropriate expression, English conventions, spelling, punctuation, all of that stuff. Sorry, I'm reading off my um, slide here because I cannot read it on the screen in front of me. It's too small. Balancing the use of literature and reflective writing. So making sure that it's not all about the literature or it's not all just about your practice. That's very important to get that balance right. Attributing the work of others correctly by doing your referencing. And you can clearly see here I've got 10 or more references for a high distinction. So if you want a high distinction, that's what you need to aim for. The more references you use, the better informed your overall response will be. That's how you get your marks. So keep that in mind. And, of course, applying Harvard referencing, which is very straightforward. Engaging in the process of reflective practice, using the lens of different theories of leadership through which to examine concrete examples of your leadership practice, including your own. Discussing what is revealed about your own notions and practice through this exercise. Um, articulating your initial thoughts on leadership and management. And, of course, identifying areas for further reflection and examination. And each of those is spelt out in a little bit more detail in that criteria sheet for you. Okay, given that some people wouldn't have done a bit of writing for a while, I have provided some additional information in the slides here. Oh, look, I'm getting the hang of this now. Um, about where you can go 
to get some help. But when you're writing an essay, and this is an essay, you need to make sure you've got an introduction. Um, typically, I think about the introduction as where you say what you're going to say. Okay? Give us a couple of topic sentences. Tell us what your overall approach is going to be. Then specifically outline first, second, third, finally, blah, 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 whatever. Tell the reader what you're saying in each section. You can write this at the end of the essay if you've written it. Uh, and you don't know what it's going to cover before you get to the end, it's perfectly acceptable to do that. The body of your essay then focuses on developing the discussion, making sure you've got those main points in that structure that I was talking about before, and using relevant um, examples and quotes and things like that. It's fairly straightforward, really. Make sure you use good, solid paragraphs. I'll, I'll mention that more in a moment. And then we've got our conclusion. Um, oh, sorry, I should mention that on that slide I've got some links there to uh, writing an essay. Conclusion again, this is basically where you say what you said. So the introduction is where you say what you're going to say. The body is where you say it, obviously. And then the conclusion is what, what, where you say what you've said. It's a really useful way of remembering the, um, what you put in each bit. Restate what you're saying, your overall thesis. Talk about what you've said, summarising your main points, and then include a final overall conclusive statement. That gives us some indication of what it means for the future, basically. Remember, thousands of people have talked about this. Not so much in policing leadership, but certainly lots and lots of discussion around leadership broadly, uh, and to a certain extent, a bit of discussion about policing leadership. These ideas are nothing new. What we're looking at is how you can bring those ideas to you together with your practice. That's what we're asking you to do in this task. So don't feel like you have to cite everybody and everything that's ever existed. That's not, not, not necessary. It's just about demonstrating that you've done a bit of wider reading, that you understand the ideas and how they link with your practice. Okay, I've given you an example of a paragraph. This is one that someone specifically talked about the similarities between leadership and management. Um, in an example from uh, the TASPOL cohort last year. So you can see they've got a nice topic sentence. What the role, while the roles of uh, leadership and management are different, the objectives are similar. And then they talk about what those objectives are, clearly citing some uh, research literature. And then they say, just as similarities abound, differences between the two are also numerous. That's what we're talking about when we talk about a linking sentence. So that links to the next paragraph. You already know what the next paragraph is going to be about and it's going to be focused on those differences. Um, I'll give you another example of a paragraph that's quite good. This is actually one that's talking about their own experience, their own practice and why I wanted to show this to you is so you know how to make the links between your practice and the literature that you're reading. So they say, I feel extremely fortunate that the role I currently fill is working alongside my immediate manager who practices transformational leadership. Then they give a nice example about how, you know, that looks like transformational leadership and you can see how they've linked with literature throughout. Um, that just gives you another example paragraph. What does an introduction look like? This is a good introduction from that same example. Study of leadership and management is captivated researchers. The two words and their meanings are used interchangeably. So we've got a few nice topic sentences there at the beginning. Leadership and management are both specific skills, blah, 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 blah. And then they've said at the end exactly what they're going to talk about, but probably not in enough detail. I'd argue elaborate a few sentences for this. The different notions of each will be compared and contrasted, but the discussion will not determine whether one is better than the other. Rather, it's considered that they are complementary, and importantly, that the presence of both are essential for organisations to perform at their best. So I can separate that into at least two to three sentences. Tell the reader exactly what you're going to say. First, it will discuss. Second, it will move, um, examine. Finally, it will talk about. In conclusion, it will. It's, it's fairly straightforward. So the conclusion, this is, again, just an example of a conclusion. You can see that they've summarised their main points in that. Um, and sort of talked about the future, looking ahead to the future, I'll continue to work towards this ideal match by combining past experiences with the knowledge that I have obtained um, from this study.